Hello folks. So the next thing that this game is missing is some actual collision with the enemies. At the moment I can pretty much just run through them and nothing happens. So I'm going to add that in but before I do there is one more element that should be really quick to add and it's this extra obstacle that I had in my original level and it's just bits of lava that are here that the player needs to jump over. I'm going to add them in first because it really shouldn't take too long. If you come down to the world class, remember the way I've set this up is that the tile numbers correspond to whatever obstacle I'm putting in. So it's really easy to add more as I go on. So the next one I want to add is for this lava. That means that I can just come underneath where I've got my tile equals three, make a new space and say if tile equals. So you would think it's four, but when I originally made the game, I, uh, I added in something else in four and five. Lava came afterwards. So lava was actually assigned to number six. And since we're using that same level data, it doesn't make sense to change it now. So I say if tile equals six, I want to create lava. I want to do it in the exact same way as I did with the blobs. I created a class for them. So I'll come down to where my, my enemy class is and I can just create uh, a lava class. So I say class lava and I type out that. In fact, I'll just copy this line from up here. So you can just do the same thing. Just copy that here. Uh, and then we need the constructor. So in fact, just copy this entire init function from player and we can modify it as we go. So the init function is the same. It needs an X and a Y coordinate for where the lava is going to go. We call that. Uh, now the only difference here is before I actually do a self dot image assign, I need to load the picture in because I'm going to be scaling it. So I, I load in as the image variable and I change this from blob to lava. Uh, and then I can say my self dot image is a scaled version of that. So self dot image equals pygame dot transform dot scale. Uh, and then I scale the image I've just loaded and the X and the Y sizes that I want to scale to are my tile size for the X coordinate and oh, I need to put in a bracket here tile size and then tile size over 2 because it's going to take up half of the block height size over 2 okay so that'll scale it and then I'll create a rectangle from it so that stays the same and these lines here assign the X and Y coordinates to the rectangle I can delete this move direction and move counter. This isn't needed for the lava because it's going to be stationary. So let me just run this code in case there's any errors. And uh, there is an error because I have messed up my indentation somewhere. Of course, I've not put anything in here yet. I'll just put a pass for now. Okay, code runs fine. So there's no errors there. So now what I can say is that if tile equals six, I need to create an instance of this new class that I've just created. So I can change that pass to lava equals an instance of the lava class and the x and y coordinates well i can just copy what i did for the enemy because this is pretty much going to be the same thing i'm going to use for all of these tiles except i don't need this plus 15. Uh, so that's it so that will create my lava instance and uh, it's going to position it at this x coordinate this y coordinate and the last thing is i need to do the exact same thing as i did with the blobs and add it to a group so let's come down here and make sure i define a lava group so that's exactly the same thing pygame.sprite.group and that creates an empty group for me and now I can come back up to where I'm actually creating a lava instance and say lava underscore group dot add brackets lava so just exactly as what I've done with the blobs up here so that's going to create it let's run this code just make sure it's all okay still that's fine so everything executes there's no lava still but that's just because I need to draw uh, sorry, I need to call the draw uh, method. So let's come down to the main game loop. And remember, even though I haven't defined the draw method, it's already built into the sprite class. So I can just put under here lava group dot draw onto the screen. Let's run that. And there you go. It's coming up. Uh, but because I made it half of the height, it, it's obviously taken up half of the height of this block. But the x and y coordinate is still the top left of each tile. So actually, what I need to do is move it down by half a tile. So let's go all the way back up to where I'm creating it within this section here. If tile equals six, this is the X coordinate. This is the Y coordinate. I just need to add an extra half a tile to it. So let's just say plus tile size divided by two. And make sure you use these uh, double division or either that or you can put an int at the start here to convert to integer because otherwise you're gonna get a float value and Pygame will give you an error. So there we go. The lava is now coming up in the middle, uh, down the bottom here. 
So that's all working fine now. I've got uh, some extra uh, depth to the game. I've got a little bit more of a feature to it. But again, I'm just running through it. Nothing happens when I step into the lava or come in contact with the enemies. So what I want to do is basically control all this with a single variable. I'm going to have a variable called game over and I'll define it right at the beginning. So this will be a global variable. So we come up here where I've got my defined game variables right at the start of the game. And I've got tile size is 50. So I'll just say underneath game over equals zero. So I'll start off with just a zero condition means the game is not over. We can play. But as soon as I come in contact with a lava or one of the enemies, then I need to change this value to something else. So if I come down to my player class, I've got my update function or update method. He moves around with all these buttons. I handle my animation, gravity and check for collision. So what I can now start doing is just adding more collision checks. But these collision checks are going to be with the enemies and with the lava. So make sure that the indenting is correct. So this is going to be in the same row or in the same line as this check for collision above. So I need to indent a couple of times into here and then I can say check for collision with enemies. I'll bring this down a little bit actually. So here I'm going to be just checking whether there's a collision between the player and any of the enemies. So that's quite straightforward. There's a function for that within Pygame. So I say if pygame.sprite and now I'm just going to say sprite collide. So I'm looking for sprite collision. Now before I used collide rect, which is just collide, collision between two rectangles. Sprite collide, it, it kind of works in the same way, but here instead of supplying the rect values, so here I was using rect, I'm just going to put in the names of the sprites. So the sprite that I want to check collision for is the player itself. So that is just going to be self. Then the sprites that I'm going to be checking against are my enemies, which are in the blobs. So I don't have to iterate through each of the blobs within the blob group. I can just simply say blob underscore group and it's going to check for collision with all of them that are in it. And whether if I come in contact with any of them, it's going to detect the collision. And then this final argument, I'm going to set this to false. This is a do kill uh, argument and it's just a Boolean. If it's set to true, then it's going to delete the, the sprites that come into this collision. So I don't really want anything to disappear. I just want to recognize that there is a collision. And when that's happened, I want to set game over to minus one. So minus one is what I'm going to use for when the players died. So now I can just copy this, copy it down below, because now I've checked for collision with enemies. I need to check for collision with lava. Just change that to lava and change this to lava group. Uh, let's run the code, see what happens. Okay, so nothing's going to happen if I run into the lava, nothing actually brings up. But what I can do underneath here is just say, and I, I use this for troubleshooting just to make sure that things are actually working well in the background. So if I just print the game over variable when I come in contact with the lava, then I should be getting nothing in the console down here until I come in contact there and now it's printing out minus ones. Okay, so I know that this is working. It's updating the game over variable. However, there's an important thing to keep in mind. This game over variable is a global variable. So it's defined outside of this class and outside of this method. So there's only so much I can actually do with it. And I can only go so far before I start running into errors. But before I do that, I just want to explain what I want to do with this variable in the first place. So basically, all of these changes in here within this update class, uh, sorry, this update method, I only really want them to happen when the game is running. So, for example, the fact that the player can move around and there's animation and there's gravity, I only really want all of that to happen when the game over condition is set to zero. As soon as something changes, I don't really want any of that to happen anymore. So that means that pretty much all of this stuff can be nested inside an if statement. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So above where I've got my key prices, this is within the update method of the player class. So above here, I'm going to say if game over equals zero. So as long as game over is zero, and then I just indent. So I highlight all of this. So my key prices, my animation, gravity, checks for collision, checks for collision with uh, lava and the enemies, update the player coordinates. All of this gets indented. So all of that is only going to happen as long as game over is equal to zero. And I just noticed actually there's a line of code here or a piece of code here, which I added right at the start of the tutorial, which we don't need anymore. What this was doing was checking whether the player is falling off the bottom of the screen. This is before I added all the collision for the actual level. So this isn't really needed. We can delete that. Uh, now, if I run this code now, I'm going to get an error. And this error is going to say that local variable game over is referenced before assignment. So this is what I was saying about that game over variable being global. I've defined it all the way outside of this class and outside of this method. 
but then I'm trying to access it here. So this method doesn't know that this game over variable exists outside. As far as it's concerned, this is a local variable here that I'm asking for a check against, and I haven't defined it anywhere. So I could just say in here, game over equals zero, but that doesn't really give me the control that I need. What I want to do is feed this game over variable from my overall global variables into this update method. And I can do that by just adding it as an argument. So I can just say game over in here. And at the end, I can return that game over. So I scroll down to where the method ends, make sure I indent and say return game over. So that means that this update method is going to be doing more than just updating the player position. It will now take a game over variable, which is always defined globally. It will process it as it needs to. And if there's a collision, it will change it, or sorry, if there's a collision with enemies or lava, it will change it to minus one, and it will return it back out, of the, back out of the method into the global variables again. So where I'm calling this method, this update method, is within the game loop. If I go all the way down, I've got this player.update. Well, now what I can do is feed in, because now I have the argument there, I can put in game over within the brackets. That means that the game over variable is going to be fed into this update method, but because it's also being returned, I can take return of it here by saying game over equals player update game over. So this is kind of like a constant loop. It takes the game over variable, which is run within the overall main game. It puts it into the update method. And then within the update method, I'm checking for collision. So if something happens and I step into the lava, it's going to change that variable and it's going to return it back to me. And then I can deal with it because then I can say, well, if game is over, then I can do so and so and I can add a restart button. So if I run this code again, you can notice the error is gone. And that's because the variable is now global, but it's being fed into the method. As soon as I jumped into it, I can't move the player anymore. Things are still carrying on in the background, but I can't move them anymore. And that's because game over is now negative one. And I can actually verify this by just putting onto the screen. So again, this isn't really part of the game, but I can just kind of troubleshoot by putting these print statements in. So this is going to be printing zero pretty much constantly. And as soon as I land into the lava, it goes to minus one. So that's it, I can't move anymore. But I don't want everything else to continue when that happens. So as soon as game over is uh, set to minus one, I want the blobs to stop moving and uh, basically stop updating. So what I can do up here is use this game over variable to determine which of the game's uh, elements continue to be updated. So underneath what I've got my world draw, like all of this stuff I still want to happen regardless of what happens, right? I want the images to be drawn, the background, the sun, and I want the level to be drawn anyway. So this is never going to be changing outside of the while loop. But underneath this, I can now say, if game over is zero, so that means that the game is running, well, in that case, I want to update the blob group. The rest of the stuff stays outside the if statement because I still want things drawn. It's just if you remember the update method for the blob group, just move them left and right. So if I run this again, if I fall into the lava, they stop moving. They're still drawn on the screen and so is the lava, but they stop moving because I'm now taking them out of the main loop and I've put them within this game over statement. So one very last thing that I want to do here is that when the player does fall into the lava, I don't want him to just freeze. I want him to kind of, well, die. I want some kind of animation to show what's happened rather than the game just suddenly freezing up. So this is going to be quite easy to add. I just go into my update method within the player class. I mean, this is pretty much where I'm going to do most of the coding. Uh, and I just want to add an extra image. So actually, this is going to be within the init method. So I've got my self.image. I've loaded in all of these pictures for the animation. Uh, but before I set my self.image, I just want to add in an extra one. This is going to be self.dead image. So when he dies, I want him to turn into a little ghost. So I just need to load in this ghost image. Again, pygame.image.load, same function that I've used before. And this one is going to be my ghost.png. So I'm not going to be using it straight away, but it's going to be loaded into the memory and it's going to be there for what I need it. Now I can go into the update method, scroll all the way down. Remember, all of this is pretty much indented within an if statement saying if game over equals zero, then we continue doing this. And then I've got the player being drawn onto the screen, so that's fine as well. But just before I draw him, I have an opportunity here to check whether he's still alive. So the statement above is if game over, if I scroll down, scroll up here, it says if game over equals zero. Well, I can add an else if statement. So I can say elif game over equals negative one. So if he's now died, then I just change that image. So self.image, which is always the image that I'm putting onto the screen with this blit function, 
it's just going to go from the animation of him moving around to the dead image. Self.dead image. So to move him, let's just say self.rec.y is minus, so decrease by 5 pixels. Remember, it's moving up the way. So let's try that again. Fall into the lava. And it's going to fall up the way. Obviously, it's just going to go off the screen. So I don't want that. I want to put a limit on it. So let's just say that as long as, so if self.rect.y is greater than 200, only then do we continue doing that. So let's try this again. And this time I'll see if I can get past the lava and maybe hit one of the enemies instead. There we go. Turns into a little ghost and floats up the way. So that's it. Uh, now I've got this collision and everything kind of stops when that happens. So the next thing to add is to actually have some kind of game over text and then a restart button to be able to reset the game back to normal. So I'll do that in the next video. If you found this one useful, then please do leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with these, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.